everyone, April Dunham here and welcome to Power Platform Rewind. This is a brand new monthly series where I'll rewind and walk through all of the Power Platform related news for the month. I know we all can get overwhelmed and feel a bit behind with all the new changes and announcements for the Power Platform that are released on a regular basis. So that's why I decided to create this new series to break down all the different updates on a monthly basis so that you can stay informed and up to date. All right, let's get started. All right, so the first bit of news really snuck under the radar this month. We can now have native printing and Power Apps. Now, I know this is something that has been requested on the Power Apps forums for a while now, so everyone should be really happy to see this pushed out now into production. I believe it's rolling out as we speak, so if it's not in your tenant yet, it should be very soon. Everyone who has tried implementing some kind of printing mechanism and power apps will rejoice over this because as you know, traditionally it was pretty hard to do. We had to either use a flow to handle that or leverage a PCF control. Now it is all built in and native with inside the experience. So we have a brand new print icon that we can leverage with inside Power Apps. So all we have to do to implement this new printing functionality is add in that print icon or whatever mechanism you want to click to initiate the print. And we have a brand new function called print. And all we have to do is on the on select of whatever object you want, put in your function there and it prints your screen. Next up, Power Automate Desktop is now free for Windows 10 users. We'll probably have a bit more Power Platform news this month because Ignite was earlier this month and that's when Microsoft releases a ton of new features and functionality. One of those things that they did announce at Ignite is the fact that we can now leverage and build RPA or robotic process automations leveraging Power Automate Desktop for free if we have an appropriate Windows 10 license. If you wanna see how to install this and how it works in action, browse my channel and I do have a video on that where I walk through a scenario of how to start using it. We also got a few Dataverse for Teams announcements this month. I'm a big fan of Dataverse for Teams, so I'm excited to see them constantly expanding and adding new features. With the Dataverse for Teams usage really taking off, we can now leverage in-place upgrades. So what this means is if you run into a scenario where you want to upgrade to the full-fledged version of Dataverse, whether it's because of a capacity issue, or maybe you want to take advantage of some of those additional functionalities that we get with the full version, we can now do what's called an in-place upgrade. So if you're an admin, you can go to admin.powerplatform.com. You'll see your list of environments like we're seeing here. You can select one of your Dataverse for Teams environments, and you'll see a new upgrade option in the ribbon that lets you take that Dataverse for Teams environment and upgrade that to a full-fledged Dataverse environment. Keeping up with the Dataverse for Teams news, they've also announced that this is available in even more regions. So those of you in South Africa, Switzerland, and UAE, you can now leverage Dataverse for Teams environments. And one more bit of Dataverse for Teams news here, we can now have more Dataverse for Teams environments. When it was first released, they capped it at 500 total environments. Now, in addition to that 500 environments, they've announced some additional capacity where we can get five more Dataverse for Teams environments per 20 valid licensed Microsoft 365 users. Next up is PowerFX. I would say this PowerFX was probably one of the biggest Power Platform related announcements at Ignite, maybe only second to the Power Automate desktop that we just talked about. Now, right now, PowerFX is just a name that's given to the formula language that we already use in Power Apps Canvas apps. But what's exciting here is that they've announced their long term vision for this. They want to have one formula language across all of the Power Platform products, and PowerFX is going to be that language. So eventually, this is going to be the one unified language we use across Power Apps, Power Automate, Virtual Agents, and all the Power Platform products. If you want to learn more, check out my YouTube video that I do have on that as well. Oh, okay, got to do a stretch here. So many great announcements. Let's switch to some Power Automate announcements. So if you use the new approvals powered by Power Automate app inside of Microsoft Teams, one of the things you have probably ran into, like I have myself, is needing to format the body of the approval message. Well, now they finally announced that we have the ability to put in markdown in the body so that we can have nicely formatted approval messages. 
Switching back to Power Apps now, there's some updates to the formula bar that you might find helpful. Have you ever been using the formula bar to type a really long formula? You press that enter button trying to get to a new line and nothing happens. With these new formula bar updates, now when you press that enter button, you'll get a new line as expected and you don't have to do that workaround of pressing shift enter. We can also still add new lines in the formula bar with shift enter and alt enter. They've also added a scroll bar, thank you, to the formula bar so that we can easily scroll through our really long formulas. And they've improved tabbing. So when we're typing a formula, you know, if you click tab, it usually has the auto suggestions to help fill out your formula. We still have those, but if you just want to do a true tab to have a space in there, they made changes to the formula bar to make that easier. Just a few more news and announcements to go. Next up is the Power Apps code review tool. If you haven't subscribed already, make sure to check out the PowerCat live channel on YouTube. They are putting out some great content. Mehdi, who is on the PowerCat team, has created a great Power App to help us do code reviews. It's pretty cool what he's doing here. He's leveraging the new Power Apps source code functionality, which allows us to extract the code from a Canvas app and using that to do a code review on the app itself. So it can actually inspect your application using that source code tool, identify any potential performance issues or bugs, and give you a pass fail. I think this is going to be a really useful tool for anyone developing Canvas applications to check their code. There's a great video on the PowerCat channel walking you through the solution. The solution is available to download and start using for free. I have tested it out myself. It is pretty cool. So definitely encourage you to check that out and look at the video description so that you can see a link to download that tool. Now let's talk a little bit about the security side of things. DLP or data loss prevention policies are an invaluable tool for managing your power platform environment. These DLP policies help you restrict what connectors people can use and what they can do with them inside of their power platform solutions. This is important because it helps you apply to company policies and prevents potential data leaks. To help you manage these data loss prevention policies, the PowerCat team has pushed out a new DLP editor in the Center of Excellence Toolkit. This is another app that you're definitely going to want to start using today. It's going to allow you to run through scenarios and find out the implications of applying a certain DLP policy. So take this scenario. Maybe you want to put forth a policy that shuts off the Twitter connector totally. Before you do that, you can run that scenario through this new DLP policy editor and see which apps and flows this would impact inside your environment. So it goes and looks at all the power apps and all the flows that you have created there, leveraging that Twitter connector, and it will tell you the impact of setting that DLP policy. This allows you to be proactive, making sure you're not introducing any problems to the apps and solutions that are already out there. There have also been some great improvements to solutions with Canvas apps that are worth mentioning. If you've ever tried to use a Canvas app that calls a flow inside the app inside of a solution for Power Platform, then you'll be happy to see these updates. Now when we have a Canvas app inside a solution that triggers a flow, you don't have to worry about having to edit the app to reestablish that connection. The other really cool thing in these updates is the fact that Canvas apps now support managed properties. Now this will be really interesting to those of you wanting to sell a Power Platform based solution and put that out on AppSource. Now that Canvas apps support managed properties, we have the ability to control whether others can customize our app. So usually if you're putting something out there that you want to sell or put on a marketplace, you probably wouldn't want the people installing it to be able to go inside the Canvas app and make breaking changes. Thanks to the managed property support now in Canvas apps, we can counteract against those scenarios. All of you code first developers are going to be happy about this one. The Dataverse custom API is now in general availability. And finally, wrapping up the news for March 2021, we have some new flow templates for those in the education space. Brian Dang, who's a PM on the PowerCat team and a former educator himself, put out this great blog post earlier in March, highlighting some of these new flows for the education space. You see the different templates listed here. Some of the ones that I find pretty interesting are submitting professional development requests, creating an assessment calendar, and automating registration for courses or school events. So if you're in the education space, definitely check out these new flow templates. Whew. 
All right, that was a lot of news and announcements for Power Platform for the month of March 2021. I hope that you found this all helpful. If you did, do me a favor and click that subscribe button. And I'll catch you next month for the April 2021 edition of Power Platform Rewind.